In this video, we'll be looking at covalent bonding. Previously, I've done a video on ionic bonding. An ionic bonding involved a metal reacting with its opposite, a non-metal, and bonding ionically with the transfer of electrons. But it's quite clear that non-metals can react with one another because there are lots of very well-known compounds that are made of two or more non-metals, like water, H2O, hydrogen and oxygen. Both of them are non-metals. Carbon dioxide, carbon and oxygen, both of non-metals. And there are many more. And the unusual thing about these is the fact that when we looked at ionic bonding, we saw that the non-metal always wanted to gain electrons. Now, if two non-metals were to bond ionically, they'd both try and gain electrons, which isn't possible. They can't both gain. Where would they gain from? So instead, they have to share electrons. And covalent bonding is defined as sharing a pair of electrons. So not just any old number, but a pair of electrons. Sorry, I'm running out of space there. And it always happens between two non-metals, or more than two non-metals. Now, first of all, we're going to look at the simplest element of all, hydrogen. Remember, hydrogen is element number one. That means it's got one proton and it's got one electron. So in its outer shell, it's got just the one electron. Now, we know that the outer shell of a substance wants to be full for it to be stable. So hydrogen, hydrogen would ideally like two electrons in its outer shell. So when hydrogen atoms are on their own, here are two of them, when hydrogen atoms are on their own, they will bond together by sharing electrons, and this will give both of the atoms a full outer shell. So, for example, by overlapping their two shells, their orbits, we get both hydrogens having, if we go around there, two electrons in their outer shell. So that's why hydrogen always goes around as a pair, and its formula as the element is H2, not H. Now, the same applies to other gases. If we look at fluorine, again, a fairly simple element. It's number nine in the periodic table. That tells us it's got nine protons. So that tells us that because of our rule of arranging electrons, there must be two electrons in the first shell and seven in the second shell. Well, if two fluorine atoms come near each other, then they can immediately allow their outermost shell to overlap and in doing so the two electrons there are being shared so that if we count up going around each electron's outer shell we've got two four six eight full outer shell two four six eight again a full outer shell now the inner shell in both has got two they've been drawn slightly differently but that doesn't matter so non-metals also can achieve a full outer shell by sharing a pair of electrons Hence, fluorine, like hydrogen, goes around in a pair. Hydrogen, H2, fluorine, F2. And we'll come back to more elements that do that in a second. Let's have a look at a slightly more complicated molecule now. Let's have a look at methane. Methane is the simplest hydrocarbon. It's got one carbon, and carbon has four electrons in its outer shell. If you're not sure how you know that, very, very quickly, in an exam, you get a periodic table. If you know what group an element is in, and these numbers are the groups, carbon is in group 4, the 4 tells you it's got 4 outer electrons. Now, equally, carbon's atomic number, or proton number, is 6. That tells us it's got 6 protons. 6 protons means 6 electrons, 2 in the first shell, 4 in the second. So it's very quick and easy to know how many electrons carbon has in its outer shell. Now, hydrocarbons are just made of carbon and hydrogen. Carbon has four outer electrons, so it needs four more to get a full outer shell. So it can share with four different hydrogen atoms. Each one is going to share one electron. with the carbon, and there you have 
a carbon which has got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight electrons in its outer shell. And each hydrogen, by sharing, has two electrons in its outer shell. So that is methane, CH4. Now, that structure looks quite complicated. If you want to save time in the exam and just simplify things a bit, you can leave out the inner shells. So, if this was an exam question and I was asked to show the bonding in methane, I would probably just put my carbon in the middle, draw a roughly circular shell orbit with four electrons in it, and then around each I would just have a hydrogen overlapping. Each hydrogen will draw its electron with the dot. And there we have the simplified picture of methane. Okay, outer shell of carbon, two, four, six, eight electrons, four of its own, four shared from hydrogen, and each hydrogen four electrons of its own. And that is perfectly adequate for most purposes. Uh, that's what the examiners will be looking for at GCSE and probably at AS level as well. So we don't need to overcomplicate things. Where things do start to get a little bit more complicated is in those elements that need to gain or lose more than one electron, bonding with other elements that need to gain or lose more than one electron. So let's think of oxygen gas. As many of you know, oxygen gas has the formula O2. Why is it O2? Well, let's have a think about what an oxygen atom looks like. We go to our periodic table. Oxygen, O, is in group 6. So it has 6 electrons in its outer shell. So let me draw the outer shell of an oxygen. I'll just put O there for oxygen. 6 electrons. I'm going to draw 2 there, 2 there, and 2 there. Oxygen has six electrons of its own. To get a full outer shell, it will need to share two more. So another oxygen comes along, and it can put two electrons of its own. In between, where the two shells are overlapping, it's got another four dots of its own, six dots in total, and the other oxygen, six crosses in total. So we haven't created or destroyed any electrons. We've still got six Crosses the outer shell of one oxygen, six dots the outer shell of the other, but where the two shells overlap, they are sharing two pairs of electrons. So, not surprisingly, if you're sharing two pairs of electrons, remember my original definition, if we go back a couple of slides to what a covalent bond was, sharing a pair of electrons. If we're sharing two pairs of electrons, we've got two bonds. We've got a double bond. 